We have a very special guest who's always been with us, but unfortunately she's uh, out and about. She's only with us uh, through Skype. Mm -hmm. We have together with us Dr. Christina Pillai, marriage and family therapist. Good morning, Dr. Christina. Where are you? Good morning. Good morning. A pleasure to be with you. Hello, Dr. Christina. Hi, <laughs> Happy New Year. Oh, yeah. Happy New Year. Uh, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. And we're so excited to have you to come join us yet again on Fresh Brew. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. Always a pleasure. All right. So, Brandon, mm. uh, would you mind doing the honest since you are the one who is going to be diving in into that relationship? Oh, Hello. FYI, Dr. Pillai, he just got engaged a couple of weeks oh ago. Oh, my so, gosh. Yeah. Congratulations, Brandon. Announced to the whole world on TV. Thank you so much, Mr. Mio. This guy... Okay, never mind. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Dr. Christina, yes, we spoke about relationship a couple of months back, right? Uh, and right now, we're talking about the blame game. So, mm. what is actually the blame game? How, why do we define this as the blame game besides pointing fingers at someone? Could it be uh, an emotional thing as well? Now, blaming is actually a, hu it's, it's a natural human tendency. All right. And it's one of the most destructive human behavior is playing the blame game. Uh, the reason why I say that, because the nature of blame is to divide, not unite. And we're all guilty of it. It's innately in us, right? But it does not give us an excuse to behave badly. I mean, we can look at history. Let's look a little bit at history, all right? Blame has been responsible for mass casualties of war. And uh, why? Because the nature is to divide and to conquer. Mm -hmm. It's responsible for deaths, it's responsible for suicides. And even in the political arena, you see the blame game happening. But looking within the family context, blame has also been responsible for divorces. Mm -hmm. There's also been responsible for separation and family breakups. Right. So it has caused considerable amount of you know, human frustration, human grief, distress and pain. Because when it comes to uh, playing the blame game, nobody wins. There's no winner in this. Right. Yeah, there's no winner. It's just who is actually mm -hmm. winning the whole game altogether by getting angry and seeing who reacts first. Mm -hmm. But of course, yes. back in 2020, the uh, divorce rate in Malaysia has gone up. Not even in Malaysia, but all over the, the world. world. Yep. Uh, do you mm -hmm. think that it's a little bit too late to actually hit back, not into 2020, but to actually repair the relationship? Um, would you say that back in 2020, when we had the movement control orders, so on and so forth, uh, divorce rates went up, it was merely because of the blame game? Blame game always has to be part of it because it's innately inside of us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have it. And we're humans. We're not perfect human beings. We're fallible human beings. So it's very natural for us to externalize that. Mm -hmm. And you know what, uh, Brendan and Muir, just two days ago, Friday, January the 13th, just two days ago, uh, you know, it was a national blame someone else day. It was a day dedicated to blame. Okay. Just two days ago, it was called right. National Blame Someone Else wow. Day. Wow. All right. You know, so what? What is blame? When we look at blame, like what? What is this? What is this thing? What is this blame? Let's look at it in simple terms. All right. So blame is defined as assigning responsibility for one's fault or wrong towards another. Mm -hmm. So we're responsible for our own thoughts. We're responsible for our own emotions and our own behaviors. But when we don't take that responsibility, what we do is we place that responsibility onto someone else. And that can be our spouse for our behavior. So if something does not go the way that we want it to go, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. someone else other than myself, right, must be identified, right, and blamed for causing the situation. So Truth be told, blaming your spouse or blaming the person you love for your problems is actually a complete waste of time. Mm -hmm. Because when we do that, we don't learn anything. There's no sense of growth. There's no sense of maturity. We can't mature, we can't grow. And this means we can't make our life better, mm -hmm. yeah. a, you know, for, for us individually and also in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, funny you should mention that, uh, Dr. Christina, because again, speaking from a guy who's uh, happily married for the past 
Wait, hold on. I have to count. 13, 13 <laughs> years. Yes, 13 years. I am I'm married for 13 years. And of course, uh, Brandon will be joining uh, that club soon enough. I mean, like having <laughs> being in that relationship, it takes a lot of practice. It takes a yes. lot of perseverance from both parties, not just from the husband, but also yes. from the wife as well. Both, mm -hmm. they need to play the game as per, as as mm -hmm. as, as proper and as civilised as one can be. Mm -hmm. But you can't, uh, you can't deny the fact that there are egos in play. Especially for oh. the husbands when they say that, oh, okay, I'm the husband. I'm the guy who wears the pants at home. You know, I need to do this. I need to, uh, you know, you're, you're the one who should be blamed because I'm the man. Whereas the wife would have, you know, I'm taking care of the kids. You know, I, I bring food to your table, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. So it doesn't end. It's a vicious cycle, doctor. Yes, definitely it's a vicious cycle because when it comes to blame, it doesn't uplift a relationship. It doesn't uplift your sense of self because the goal of blame is to tear down and to break down your sense of self. Mm -hmm. So it has, very, it has very much dire consequences. You know, it causes low self-esteem. Low self-esteem esteem basically speaks about how we feel about ourselves. And low self-confidence, uh, you know, speaks about how we think about ourselves. So when we continue the blame game, uh, this continuous sense of low self-esteem and, and low self-confidence uh, will continue. And then we begin to question our identity. We begin to question, who am I? Who am I in this relationship? What role do I play in this marriage? Right. Mm -hmm. And then that causes that overthinking, indecisiveness, and it affects our sense, uh, our uh, mm -hmm. self-worth. Right. So yeah. there are two two groups of couples, mm -hmm. right? So we have the first group of couple where what they do is this couple, they blame each other and everyone else, all right? <laughs> all and right. then we have the second group of couple, all right, where the couple, you know, tend to ask themselves. They tend to look inward. They mm -hmm. tend to take that accountability and the responsibility. All they right. tend to look inward and they ask themselves, what can I do differently in this relationship? Mm-hmm. All right, so w which couple are you then? Couple A, couple B, Brandon? <laughs> I am you. Uh, <laughs> okay, but anyways, talking about the blame game and uh, blamers out there, uh, mm. okay, let's just uh, talk about them as well. As well. Uh, sometimes they might do things, they might blame people without pointing finger physically, without actually doing it. And uh, in a sense, they don't, they don't even realise that they are actually doing it. So can this sort of thing happen? Of course, of <laughs> course, because it goes back to us having that innate desire, it's so much more easier uh, for us to blame than take accountability for our actions. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so much easier for us to do that because when, it, even in terms of, of uh, spouses or relationship, mm -hmm. uh, there is a, this blame game continues. You know, for example, you know, a husband will say, <clears throat> my wife made me, uh, my wife made me late or my husband made me feel guilty or mm -hmm. my wife pressured me to make certain decisions. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, or there's also this very common that I see out there is a man beats up his wife and blames his wife for not understanding him. Oh, you know, man. or a wife <laughs> blames her husband on a daily basis for their unhappy marriage. Yeah. So this game just goes back and forth, back and forth, and yeah. there's no ending because like it's I like said, a ping pong match, of, isn't it? It's just like, yes. you know, it's a non-stop uh, thing. Yeah. When well, Mio yeah. plays the blame game, you know why? Because whenever I ask him to come and hang out with me, he would say, No, la, my wife don't let. Yeah, <laughs> because I love my wife and a happy wife is a happy life, uh, Dr. Christina. You see how it comes back around. But anyways, uh, uh, Dr. Christina, uh, let's talk about the underlying truth. You know, yes. and, uh, uh, when it comes to playing this game, mm. why do you think someone blames another person all the time? Is it PTSD? Is it because, um, I don't know, attitude problem or besides ego, what could it be? Okay, there is always an underlying behavior of blame. Mm -hmm. And the underlying behavior of blame is simply the discharging of discomfort, mm -hmm. all right? The discharging of shame, the discharging of pain, that sense of abandonment, that sense of rejection. So these emotions, when it's not dealt with, these mm -hmm. negative emotions that are not dealt with, it begins to suppress within us, okay. right? So this suppression will do nothing but further... Um, you know, exacerbate or uh, foster anger and, and frustration. It comes up in a form mm -hmm. of blame. So mm -hmm. the unsettled emotions has to be addressed. The unsettled emotions then begins to point an accusing finger mm -hmm. onto another. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
All right. Yeah. Um, okay, I do want to bring you to a current topic, which is the hottest topic right now that's happening in Malaysia right now. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm not going to be mentioning names here, but I think, uh, Dr. Christina, I think you know what I'm talking about here. Whatever that is happening within Malaysia itself, there's a huge ruckus that has been uh, happening between celebrities and whatnot. Mm -hmm. You know, this guy is not doing something, and then the wife comes out, and then the second wife comes in play, and then people started to point, uh, pointing the blame, mm -hmm. and the, the funny thing is when netizen comes in when, when they themselves give out that their, their own impressions and their own uh, idea about all of this mm -hmm. is just getting way out of hand so to you Dr. Christina specifically the, is, is this worthy or even uh, for a discussion in regards of how the blaming game is happening within a marriage and bringing it a notch uh, higher even you know because being in a relationship is always easier for us to focus on the other person uh -huh. rather than focusing inward, rather than empowering ourselves and say, how do we play a role in this, right? So yeah. you can't change other people, but you can change your part in the equation. Mm -hmm. And this gives you a lot of power to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, you can take charge of your own behavior. And then you can ask the question, what is, what is, is, causing, this, uh, what is causing this divide? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Instead of us coming together and being in unity, what is causing this divide? But if we're not going to take that accountability and look inward, then this blame game will continue. Because the opposite of blame is accountability. Mm -hmm. And accountability is a very vulnerable yeah. process. Yeah. You know? It is not blaming, but seeking to understand what has happened, seeking to understand both parties and mm -hmm. to find a solution uh, to the uh, presenting issue. Yeah. And being married, you know, being married does not give us a license, does not give us a license to blame our spouse. Mm -hmm. Just because we are certified wife and husband. Yeah, but but the funny thing is that uh, what, what's happening right now is that both parties are trying to make themselves very, very... I mean, like, they really want to point out, out there that I didn't do anything wrong. It's that person's fault. It's that person's fault. Again, I want to take accountability, but that person is actually doing, making it worse, making it more mm -hmm. intangible, making it uh, far more aggressive in any way, shape or form. It's basically saying that I've done my bit, now it's your fault because I'm on the up and now and I'm taking accountability, but still you're in the wrong. Is that still fair? Of course it's not, because you know why? I mean, when it comes to a situation between husband and wife, both parties are right and both parties are right and both parties are wrong. <laughs> but it does not give us a license to behave badly. Right. I love how it actually boils back down to attitude and how mm. you react around yeah. it. Now, uh, Dr. Christina, let's talk about all the victims of this uh, blaming game at the receiving end. Um, mm. If, let's say, what, what would you say to the victims out there? How can they uh, do better in the sense that if they are dealing with uh, a situation like this, what can they do? Yeah, for very much, let's, let's talk a little bit about uh, within a couple relationship, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. um, these are skills that is important uh, for us to develop in our relationship. Mm -hmm. It's not to love hard, but to love smart. Mm -hmm. ooh, ooh. So <laughs> that is important. Sometimes we get so overwhelmed, we get tired, we get exhausted because we don't have the necessary skills in our hands to understand. But somehow we somehow have this, we somehow have the skills uh, when we're courting, because we know what to say, when to say, how to say. Yeah. We know how to apologize. We know how to be sensitive. We mm -hmm. know how to be intuitive when we're dating, when we're courting. Mm -hmm. But as soon as we sign the marriage certificate, <laughs> we feel that we can just say whatever we want with no sense of filter. So... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, to be honest with you, Doctor, I, I was laughing throughout that because, again, it, it reminds me, you know, through my younger years previously, again, when I was courting my wife, where, you know, like, like what they say, like, even if you step on an ant, the ant will not die because, like, you were trying to do your utmost best to make sure that you do not, um, yeah, you do not make your, your other half uh, unhappy, upset and whatnot. And what Brandon mm -hmm. is actually doing right now as well, but he has not entering that phase yet where everything is all legit and legal. So, yeah, he needs to understand the blame game about much better, <laughs> Dr. Christina. But the thing yeah. is, Dr. Christina, right? <laughs> Your stats have actually proven the fact yeah. that uh, you don't have to get married before the blame game starts. Oh, okay. Okay, uh, <laughs> as long as you're in a relationship mm -hmm. and apparently one in four women out there, mm -hmm. they suffer from the blame game oh. at a very early age of uh, what, 16 and 17. So you see, wow. it's oh. not just the marriage, you know, don't play, okay. play. Okay, blame game can start anytime. Like what we're doing right now. So basically, yeah. 
with me on. Yeah. I, I, when it when it comes to couples, it's very important to understand certain skills. And mm-hmm. though if there's one skill, um, if we can take away from this, is don't build a case against each other. Ah. Uh. Right. So because when a conflict arises, it's very easy for us to fuel fire with all kinds of proofs of of our partner's character flaws. Right. Right. We may start to mind journal what, you know, what uh, what a partner did right or what a partner did wrong. Mm. So case building is a huge problem in a relationship right. because when couples come in, all they do is they're talking about their spouse. They're not looking into it and say, how did I contribute to this? Mm-hmm. You know, so once we start to see our partner in a certain way and we off, when we begin to see them in a certain way, we begin to perceive them. Mm-hmm. Or misperceive them, mm-hmm. okay? And, you know, through our negative filter because we have already put that on. So mm-hmm. even if our spouse do something good, we're taking it as a form of criticism. Mm-hmm. Even if our spouse' casual behavior meant good, we're taking it as a form of rejection. Oh, mm. man. okay. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you, you had us both at like, like total silence over here because yeah, it is actually very true. <laughs> but, but I, I believe, uh, Doctor Christina, it's all about communication, isn't it? At the end of the day, yeah. because again, I mean, like again, speaking uh, from uh, from a married couple, for instance, you guys fell in love in the first place. Obviously, there's great communication there, and moving forward, granted, you've been together for uh, X amount of years and whatnot. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. communication still needs to be there. Between in that relationship between both parties, that's the most uh, important thing, isn't it? Communication, not the of course Christina. communication, but communication with compassion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That but, is very important because we're neurobiologically hardwired mm-hmm. for connection. Mm-hmm. Right. We, we desire to be in a relationship. We desire to be connected. Mm-hmm. So, in the absence of compassion, there is always suffering. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a very yeah. good one. <laughs> so, you know, a, a wife would, would, would say, uh, you know, she may show her anger, she may show her frustration, but deep down within herself, right. what she's trying to release a message is, I miss you. I want you to spend more time with us. But that information can be muddled at times because she may wanna want the husband to think that she misses you, but she's saying a different kind of thing, which can be confusing to men. Yes, that's right. <laughs> you need to see Dr. Dr. Christina. <laughs> yes, see Dr. you're right. Christina. You're, because vulnerability is so important. We right. have to be vulnerable in a relationship. And that, that's a very scary thing for people to do. Right. To be vulnerable, yeah. Okay, Dr. Christina, before we go, of course, uh, we have to ask you this question. Yep. Um, let's say, you know, you've been in a relationship for a very long time, right? And um, someone's actually being blamed all the time. And when you step up and you ask the person, actually, why are you allowing this thing to happen? And then a the person would be like, uh, because I just want my spouse to just keep quiet. So I just take it in. Mm. You know, and they don't do anything about it. They just keep taking it in. I'm sure, Dr. Christina, you've uh, come across lots of couples out there who are like that as well. You keep taking in all the blame stories. You suppress the whole thing Mm. inside. And uh, what are the long-term effects of this in that particular relationship? For that person to even make a choice to continue in that relationship, there's a possibility of how the the childhood, the lifestyle that this person has grew up in. Uh-huh. So this could be something very normal for her. So when someone comes and say otherwise or try to work towards a healthy relationship, there will be a little bit of tug of war happening within that person mm-hmm. because that's not something normal for this person. Uh-huh. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, so yeah. Yes. I, I guess what, what Brandon is trying to understand here moving forward in his future uh, is all about <laughs> you know having that open communication, making sure that you express your uh, your what you call it, your intentions and, and, and whatever it is that you believe in as proper, as clear as you yeah, can. Yeah, because uh, previously the blame game started too. I have to be very honest. <laughs> but then it moved Already? on. Already? Uh, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> uh, and then it moved on to Cold War. Oh. Yeah, because sometimes oh, yeah. if you don't know what to say, to someone, you just better keep quiet. And then once you're cooled down, then you can talk to the person. Communication, right. just right. as you mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. Communication is actually very, very key. Yeah. Dr. Christina Pillai, a marriage and family therapist, thank you so much for being with us virtually. Uh, it's a shame that you could not be with us uh, here live. But again, appreciate your points and your uh, yeah, talks, your, yeah. your talks about this particular topic about the bleeding in, in relationship. Thank you, Dr. Christina. We'll see you soon. Bye. Take care now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.